I'm going to start the painting on this storm speeder before I assemble the entire thing. So I'm doing it in little bits and pieces. This is what I have so far. I've got the main hull. You'll notice it's missing the console and the Space Marines and the turret and a bunch of other little details. But I'm painting it in sub-assemblies because um, if I assemble it all the way, I won't be able to get in there with the paint. Uh, especially this guy right here. Uh, this console has a ton of detail, and I want to do a decent job on this. So, uh, I am painting it in sub-assemblies, and I've went ahead and primed it with a little bit of Army Painter Flat Black. Yeah. Um, I'm using this color because I want to um, use a glaze, a glaze of black. But I don't want it to be too glazy. In other words, I don't want to use white because I don't think it'll be... The, the edges, the highlights, the, the places where there's not a lot of glaze, I don't want them to be white. I want them to be a little more gray. I'm gonna get these sides too because, uh, well, I'm sure lots of it is kind of the seams where the part will be glued to the rest of the model. I don't know that that's true for all of the stuff, especially right here, so. Anything that will be black at the end will have a nice base coat of this black glaze. Anything that will be metallic at the end, like this, like this Aquila, that will have the black glaze. I'll get these dudes too. probably should have not attached <clears throat> these little upper stabilizers. It's hard to get all the way in there with the brush. So here's the first pass with the glaze. Doesn't look very good, but the idea behind the first pass was to just make sure that uh, everything was coated with a bit of black. This is the second pass. And uh, it's still drying up, but the second pass, uh, you just, I'm working kind of all in the same direction so that all the brush strokes are kind of aligned. So they're kind of in this, going the same direction. Um, and that way it should look a little cleaner. Now, the glaze isn't working the way I was hoping. It's not leaving behind a ton of gray highlights. It's basically leaving none of that. So I've ended up with essentially just a black undercoat, which is fine. It's not what I wanted, but I can work with it. 
That means, though, that we're going to have to do edge highlighting manually, which is fine. Again, not what I wanted, but it'll work. This piece right here, this front part of the hull, I've already given it a second coat and I let it dry and it looks a lot more uniform. The control panel, the control panel I've left kind of with just a single pass, so it'll be a lighter black color. Most of this is going to end up being silver anyway. Um, but I wanted some contouring there. Well, you know what? That doesn't make sense. I'll hit it with some more black. Since it's going to be silver for the most part. I want to make sure it's a nice dark silver. Or a shiny, brilliant silver. I'll tone it down afterwards with some washing. But I want the metallic to come out nicely. Our Space Marine friends, I'm pretty happy with the way I'm pretty happy with the way they look right now, so I'll leave them the way they are. Alright, and here's the main body. The black paint has mostly dried off. I did something a little different. You'll notice a little bit of gray on some of the panels, and that's because... Oh, this isn't bolted down yet. Uh, I still have all the stuff in the inside to do, but I had to go in and prime the bottom of the model with the gray, and I did some overspray to catch some of the sides, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more character. Um, and now that I have it this way, I'm kind of thinking of keeping it kind of with a gray bottom and a black top, kind of like um, fighter jets or like uh, World War II planes used to have kind of a, a lighter uh, bottom and a darker top to make kind of like optical camouflage. I think this could work. Um, and I went ahead and did a little bit of a, just a very light wash uh, on the gray, just to kind of get into the crevices, uh, just to, you know, kind of pick it up, pick up a little bit of detail. Um, I think I'm going to keep it this way. I think it looks pretty decent. Before I put the Space Marine, uh, Space Marine pilots in the cockpit, I want to make sure to get as much detailing as I, as I can. <laughs> Um, on the knee parts because once the space marines are in I really won't be able to get in there and how I've been cheap how I've been working on adding some detail is to add a little uniform green uh, uniform gray wash where is that color so I'm kind of just gonna drop just gonna touch it right where those crevices are So it's got to be pretty wet for this to work before it dries. Before it dries on the surfaces, I'll just kind of rub it off with this little cosmetics applicator. And it should be just where I want it and nowhere else. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. I can always go back and touch it up a bit with some black on the surfaces where I want it. And so that's how I got a little gray in there. I want to add a little black wash. This control panel right here. to emphasize the handle. They could probably add some color to the actual handle. 
giving the interior seating an additional pass and rather than trying to go for like a like a brown leather as, as you might expect for a seat I'm going with this metallic color because this is a seat for Space Marines and they'll be sitting in their armor so leather doesn't really make sense for padding like they wouldn't have padding uh, since they're gonna be using sitting on a leather on um, you know sitting on a seat with her armor so it's all Spartan and metallic another thing that I want to do before I seal the cockpit is finish finish with the gunners kind of targeting system I've got I've got a screen that looks like a computer screen so for the glaze on that for the glaze on that uh, screen up there I've undercoated it in black and I'm adding just ooh no that's too much that is way too much So, I've added just a glaze of light green. It's a very light glaze. Sitting on top of the black, it should give me a nice, like a CRT panel kind of effect. So, basically what I want is for those targeting uh, computer deals to kind of look like this. Once it dries, I'll end up having to do a little something like that on it as well. So I'm just doing a little edge highlighting on the model. Just on kind of big parts. Nothing too major. I also want to go underneath some of these pieces and you're not going to be able to see them very well but I still want to make them part of that repulsor um, panel idea which means they also get a black undercoat over which I'll add some metallic silver so anything that's going to be silver here at the bottom I want to paint before I glue any pieces down I'm going to go in here to this little box it looks like it holds the repulsor plate array and I'm covering it all in black although I don't intend to make it all black it's going to be black and these repulsor panels that you see here these I'll go over with silver but leave under underneath that I'll leave that black so I have a couple of different colors going here at the bottom don't really need them but, you know, as long as you're in here, you might as well. This is the other piece that I need to f paint before I finish the model, but I've already messed up quite a bit. Uh, I should not have glued this top roll cage down because it's really hard to get in there with a brush so I'm gonna have to be sloppy and then try to fix some of this stuff later so all this part where I added black by sloppiness 
I just have to make it intentional now. Before I glue this on, I'm going to apply a thin coat of gun metal to these repulsor pads. That should be close to their final color. And so I'm doing, making sure that I get that pretty much everywhere. I don't want any of the black to stick out. Um, any variations will be in just kind of the in the undercoat and how much glaze is on there, but I don't want any black. I'm even doing the back side. Um, now, it's going to be difficult to see any of the black side, but sometimes if you see the model kind of side on, you'll be able to see some of this. And so you want to make sure that. Um, from any angle that you see it, you have the color that you expect. Now this guy, there's a little jagged edge there that I must have forgotten to remove, so I'm going to have to fix that after this dries. Looks like I'm done painting and magnetizing uh, this Storm Speeder model. Uh, you can see I've got not all the paint, but, but the paint that's going to be important for me to add before I add uh, finish building the model. So I added the silver bits um, so I can put the graph pads on there. Um, and I've added a bit of wash. did the same thing with the graph pads. Um, I painted up the Space Marines. These are the pilots. Uh, they're not real detailed, but that's okay. They're not the stars of the show. Um, and what else? Oh yeah, and I painted the console right there. And one more piece, where'd it go? Oh, yeah, this top part where the turret's going to go, uh, I, uh, I added just a bit of detail kind of on the, because the aiming reticle and right there. So it's time to assemble this guy. Yeah. I chose a different head for my gunner, and so I'm going to add the headset. So the idea was I want him to look like a gunner, but I also wanted him to look a little crazy. He's helmetless on this on this uh, open top speeder type contraption. So he is one crazy guy. It's the only modification I've done to this model. This is one of those kind of guardrails or roll cage bars. I'm just adding some black undercoat. They're going to be silver or metallic before I glue them onto the model. So I want to make sure they have a nice undercoat of black so that that's, that metallic color really pops. So I'm just painting a bunch of these little pieces that I have to glue onto the model before it's completely painted. I mean, before it's completely built. Um, so before I do the real paint job, I need to at least lay down a decent base coat. 
once these go on the model, I'm basically done painting them. I can tweak it a little bit on the surfaces that you can still see, but once these are on the model, really hard to get to. So I paint them before they're glued on. So these missiles, they're really pretty. So I'm gonna make sure to give them a pretty paint job. And for missiles, for me, that means a white body with some kind of red stripe on it. And I have an idea where that red stripe is gonna go. I just wanna get a nice even coat of white on there and it's a little hard. And these roll cage details, one side at a time. Storm Speeders painting. I start painting the weapons. I have a lot more than I should since I decided to magnetize everything, but that's okay. This barrel is going to end up being a metallic silver. So I want to make sure to undercoat it with some black. Make sure I get into all the little crevices there because the gunmetal I'm gonna overpaint it so I'm not gonna let it go all the way in. I'm just gonna let it um, stay on the surface. So now I'm doing a little bit of painting on all of these magnetized pieces. Just to make sure that they look as decent as all the other parts of this model. And these guys are so tiny, they're so uh, uh, they're so delicate. that they're kind of a pain to paint. But when they're all done, they should look pretty decent. The parts are so small that there's really not a ton to it, so you just have to be careful and be neat. Don't sell them too far short, basically. A nicely painted missile or grenade pod is such a nice thing to see. So these little missiles or grenades, whatever they are. These will eventually all be red. Oh. So I'm undercoating them in white so that the red really pops out. when I do start applying it. And my, rain, my red paint is so thin here. I mean, it's not really that thin, but I don't have the best mixture control or the even brush control. So I leave it pretty thin. And when I add multiple coats, it ends up looking quite a bit better. So this first one's a little yikes looking. I get it. So 
So a lot of YouTube painters kind of skip this process, but since this is a noob-friendly channel, I kind of want to show you the difference between the different passes. So this is a dried turret. <clears throat> I'm using Dragon Red, and so you can kind of see that's uneven. That's because it's only one coat of the paint on this over um, uniform gray primer. So I kind of wanted to show you what it would look like after every pass. So this is one coat. Clearly I need at least one more. So let's give it a few coats. These missiles have been tricky because I want them white. And so the white's kind of a little uneven. Um, so I've had to be generous with the coats of white that I'm adding to this. But I do want it to be just this resplendent white. But my understanding is that painting with white is always a bit of a challenge. I should say that I'm kind of happy I'm using white even though it's a little harder to work with because I don't have anything almost that's white uh, in any of my death watch. So a little variety is good for the soul and keeping it you know few and far between it makes each instance more special I think. Here's that same piece after the second coat. It's dried. Um, it's almost there. Uh, you can see some of these gray highlights on the edges. Um, well, not highlights, but like edge highlighting. That's just a natural um, outcome of using a kind of a, a thin red paint over the gray. And I kind of like the way it looks, but I do want to choose my own edge highlighting. So I'm going to give it one last coat of red. Same thing goes for this piece. This is the missile pod. Uh, this is the second coat of red. I'm going to give it a third coat so it's exactly the, well, so it's a little brighter and um, it does away with all the gray highlighting that I want to replace with my own. I don't know that it'll all be gone, obviously, but... Now that these missiles are nice and white, uh, I'm going to add a little detail, uh, a little red band, and thankfully the missile has a perfect spot for it right here and another one right there you can kind of see the recessed edges so I'm just kind of filling that in with a red band <coughs> and I have to be a little careful because 
my red paint is pretty thin and so it can be a little hard to control so I'm just doing very light strokes So there it is. Now I'll need to do another pass with the red. It's just so light, uh, it's so thin that uh, it's not going to get much coverage, but it's a good start. I think another pass or two and we'll have nice, um, we'll have nice red bands on the missiles. Should be nice. So it's probably really tough to tell. Hmm. So it's probably really tough to tell, but right where the metal part touches this, well, I guess this other metal part, there's a little bit of depth to it, and it's just the naked primer sticking out. And it's a small enough detail that I could probably leave it out. And it's such a pain in the behind to get just that tiny little piece without getting any on the silver part. So I wouldn't blame you for not bothering with that part. Um, but it's the kind of detail that I have learned that if I don't do it, I regret it. Once the model is done, it's all I can look at is that little unfinished bit of business. So, I'm learning my lesson and taking care of it before it becomes a natural regret. Doesn't make it any less of a pain though. So I've got a couple of things to paint, um, and to simplify things, I'm going to take these magnetized weapons right off, because I'll end up painting them separately, and I want to focus on the body. Um, it's the most important part uh, of the vehicle, and so there's a couple of places I need to touch up, like you'll see that little place on the wing, on the wing there. Uh, I'm not quite sure I'm happy with the consistency of the brush stroke, so maybe I'll give it another pass with the black glaze. Um, and the step after that is just to add some of the edge highlights. There's lots of edge highlights to add to this model. It's so angular and so uh, detailed compared to, you know, old uh, firstborn marine models. So there'll be plenty to do on that. Once I finish that, I'll work on these little details. Or I'll slip them in as my the body is drying. But a lot of these details I've already started, so let's make some room, shall we? So I'll start off with touching it up with uh, another coat of glaze. And we'll go from there. On this path, I want to be careful because I've already got some of the detailing done. And I don't want to mess that up. So I'm talking about little pieces like this uh, in the console. As a matter of fact, I can take that off. That'll make my life a little easier. And this part I'm being pretty generous with the black base because this is going to be the primary color down here, but also because the secondary color is going to be like a metallic silver. And any pieces back here that are going to be metallic silver, I want them undercoated with black anyway. So 
it's all going black and then I'll pick and choose what's going to be silver. The other thing I like to do hmm, is get paint all over myself, but other than that is to kind of paint over any magnets I may have exposed. Um, yes, everyone's going to know they're magnetized, but I feel like if you cover up the magnets a little bit, it uh, it looks a little better. It uh, tends to break the suspension of disbelief with these models. So, it's just something I do. It's not something that everyone needs to do, but I think it, uh, I think it adds a nice little touch. This will also get a little bit of black because this ejection port this is where the shells come out. I want this to be silver and the inside of it to be black. For the base thing, I'm going to try something that I've tried before, but I'm not particularly good at. So I want to try again. The idea is I want to be better at it. So I'm going to try one of those broken up streets kind of um, base. So I've cut out a little circle of cork with my new hobby knife. I'm trying this one out since I wasn't very happy with how my exacto um, blade was acting up. The, the blade kept trying to slip off and it just finally annoyed me. So the attempt is going to be to have kind of a broken up road on part of the base and then kind of just some muddy gritty mess and maybe a couple of little surprises that I just got. Um, and so one of the things that I got wrong last time I tried this, I tried this with the uh, executioner tank, was that I just did this. I pasted this down and I thought, yep, I'm done. No, no, George, you are not. In order for this to work, you kind of have to break this up and then try to fit it into place again I think and I probably should have taken better care of where these pieces were going maybe it'll have to be something more like this these are just kind of slabs of concrete so I think that's what I'm gonna try I start gluing some of this down Get into these little crevices like that. I found that if I sharpen my brush, or I use like a flat brush like this one, and I rub it across the paint on the wet palette, kind of in one direction, I end up with kind of a flat edge. And it's oftentimes flat enough that I can just get it through the crevice without doing anything else. You can probably achieve much the same effect by dry brushing, but um, I like to be adventurous sometimes. because my life doesn't contain enough regrets. So it all now has a proper coat. Well, not a proper coat, but a, the right color on each detail. <clears throat> and 
here. I can go over the black undercoat. Get it really shiny. Metal paint effect right there. It's time to do a bit of edge highlighting. And I'm going to do it in two layers this time. Um, I tried it once before and it worked pretty well. So I'm going to do basically an edge highlight, edge highlight in two colors. So kind of a thicker edge highlight underneath with a gray. I'm going for a distressed. So here is the first pass at the edge highlighting. You can kind of tell it's there. It's not very pronounced. It's not as pronounced as I was hoping for, so maybe that second pass isn't going to work. I'll give it a test, but I do need to clean up a little bit. There's a couple of parts where I added, I got some gray on parts where I shouldn't have. And that's okay. This is to be expected, but also corrected. So I've done the, uh, the gray edge highlighting on top because the gray contrasts with the black. But underneath, I've got a bunch of gray parts. Well, these are gonna have a black edge highlight. Here's what I wanted to try. with a double layer edge highlighting. I'll try it up here. No, that doesn't work the way I was hoping, so I'll just let a good thing be. One of the things I really would like to do, though, to add some griminess to this filter system or this ductwork or what have you. It's already pretty grody, but kind of here on the edges. I'm adding just a light wash with black paint so it looks like uh, it's seen it's seen some things it seems some heavy use so back here it looks pretty dirty I should probably try the same up front shouldn't I be a little harder to do. You can see some dirt patterns in there. Nothing too fancy, but it's there. Some of these little details are kind of hard to paint. Like, well, for me anyway. So there's little panels here. Um, <clears throat> so what I've done is I've added kind of a thin coat of the uniform gray uh, and especially so there, these are two different panels this one's just completely sunk in this is not sunk in it's like a there's an outline there and so my hope is I want to fill in that gap 
with a bit of uh, thin gray. And then I'm gonna go over the raised part with black. So it kind of looks like the outline. I've tried using these guys and it seems to come right out of the crack, which is not what I was hoping to do. Um, I'll do something similar here. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong with the um, with these sponge applicators. So you see how I've dropped in some very light wash. Now I'm rubbing it off. And it mostly just leaves behind that line. I did that same thing right over there. Um, and it okay, it seems to be working now that I've increased the amount uh, of dilution to the paints. So I'm going to keep trying that everywhere I see one of these lines. these kind of depressions and so I'll just kind of get a wet brush and just kind of touch the depression and guide the paint where I want it so this works pretty well if you're using a pretty diluted paint it's a little harder here one of the things that I've noticed for these really tiny ones is if I add it, if I just add a little bit of water to that crevice, it makes it a little easier for the black paint, the glaze or the wash, whatever you're using, to just kind of settle in the cracks, so I'll just touch it. You see how it kind of flows wherever there's water? The drawback of this method, I think, is that it's not super precise and, <clears throat> and it doesn't leave a very dark recess but it's a pretty neat technique I, I just picked it up um, kind of by accident it seems to be working all right so I'm gonna do this same thing to all these parts So the model's done. Everything that uh, is going to be painted or washed or what have you, it's been taken care of. Um, there's one last detail to do and that's to add a little bit of varnish to the model to kind of protect it but also to kind of help it shine a little bit, kind of a, give it a satiny metallic glow. So I'll do that, but the other piece that has to be done, because it's not done until the base is done. I have this magnetized base and I have to figure out what to do with it. I'll probably keep it simple. I can make these like stones, grabs uh, slabs of, of granite. I'll add some of the technical texture paint kind of inside the cracks there. And I'll make sure to add some of that technical paint to this mound so that when it comes off, it comes off in one piece. That's going to be interesting to accomplish. I'm not sure if I'll be able to pull that off, but let's give it a shot. This is one of those little extras I want to add to this model. It's a resin crystal, and I want to add a small group of them to the base. And so I got these from 
Green Green World Games or Green. I'll, I'll put a link in the description, or the put an image up here somewhere, just so you can see where I got it. It's a company out of Europe. They make um, resin crystals among other things, um, and I looked around on Etsy and they have a shop there. I haven't tried them yet, but I'm hoping they'll they'll do what I'd like for them to do. And so what I want for them to do is to take just a little bit of color. So there's a there's an assortment of these. And these are all clear crystal, but I've created a just a, a bit of a purple wash. And I want to see if I can make these translucent purple. Kind of see what they look like. I don't want a lot of purple, I want a hint of it. So that's kind of what it looks like. It looks interesting. I'll wait, I'll wait to give it a final verdict. Um, as it dries. Yeah, they sell these in a bunch of different colors and they're really, they're really nice looking. And I bought them clear because I want to be able to pick and choose what colors to use and I think this might work. So, taking a wash of the clear, clear crystals basically gets you any colored crystal you want. Um, it'll be a light color. If you want like really opaque, dense saturated colors then you could probably just make these out of uh, different parts of sprue um, I've tried that they don't look so great for me but maybe you have better luck so if you're curious about these go check them out uh, I'm not sponsored I just think they're neat so here it is it's the finished Space Marines storm speeder it was a nice uh, it was a nice kit to work on uh, relatively simple uh, paint wise um, you really do want to take this bit by bit there's lots of stuff that you can't get to if you paint it all in one piece so you really do want to paint this in sub assemblies um, tried a couple of new techniques that little drop in method with the uh, water guiding it that seemed to work out pretty nicely for certain things you won't use it all over the model but you'll use it in some places um, so yeah, uh, I enjoyed this process. I hope you picked up a couple of things, maybe a couple of ideas, things to avoid. Um, in any case, uh, thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate uh, the, the folks that come back and watch my videos, um, leave some comments. Uh, occasionally people will subscribe. I appreciate that too. Uh, makes me um, eager to make new content as quickly as I can. So I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and be nice to someone if you can.